We're really happy that we continue to come back to ESC with a great uh, bounty of data, 19 abstracts to be uh, specific, including late breakers and rapid fires and of course the posters. The bulk of our presentation will be what we call real world data, but let's not forget that in the fifth anniversary of Aristotle publication, we still continue to come back with robust oral presentations of Aristotle sub-analyses and uh, that uh, database continues to inform us. Well, to be very honest, I'm one of the newer members of the team. I've uh, been very lucky to jump into this uh, opportunity. I, I definitely have experience in other disease areas like diabetes. Uh, during my tenure in, in Eloquis, uh, what I feel has happened is, is the promise that started with the real world data at, in ESC London has kind of reached new heights, right? So what was initially a promise from one or two databases, mostly in US, looking at the the bleeding risk has now got multiple dimensions uh, to its credit to be very specific you know where we are um, able to present newer data now is multiple geography multiple subpopulations as well as some other interesting measures of healthcare delivery like hospitalization costs and persistence. Of course, uh, the most important clinical uh, endpoint that we're seeing in these observational studies still continues to be reinforcing and uh, the, the comparative effectiveness in major bleeding and bleeding risk. Real world data complementing what we already saw in Aristotle. This is one particular abstract uh, that uh, is looking at uh, the hospitalization cost related to major bleeding. So to be very specific, you know, we say there is lower risk of bleeding, major, um, lower major bleeding. And so one database out of UK um, really looked at does it translate into slightly lower hospitalization cost. That's what we found. Yes, absolutely, because one of the things that uh, you, it makes you realize when you come and do work in focused areas is your customer, the patient as well as the physician, is not just dealing with the atrial fibrillation and stroke. When a patient comes in, they have so many other comorbidities that they are looking at, and it is so important to put your clinical data in perspective and make it relevant for them right you know they're looking at a patient with cad diabetes hypertension multiple product information that they have to see of course randomized control trials as the basis as the foundation for the data but then they always have the question like okay that's great but does it work for my patient you know my patient tends to be more diverse uh, more uh, sicker or uh, and and that is the beauty of real world you know while you know it's not in that controlled experimental setting you get a chance to tell like doctor these are from the electronic health records these are from the claims database you know these are real patients that you and your colleagues are seeing and they have the other host of comorbidities so while I did refer to one subpopulation in this Congress uh, elderly to be specific we do have hopes that we will be able to look at other subpopulations you know AF plus other comorbidities that's what my experience in diabetes and hypertension tells me like well you know the doctors have questions you know I they, okay they have AF but they also have this does it work Real world data, of course, depends on availability of the data because we go and inquire databases. Uh, the Alliance is following, trying to follow at least very strict uh, criteria on which kind of databases we look at, how well the endpoints are defined. So based on the availability of patient records, we can, will continue to bring in new data to other Congresses. Some new data you'll see at the AHA meeting in New Orleans, definitely, that's been accepted. Uh, of course, I can discuss that data, but uh, and definitely more at DSC. 
one of the, the great things for us to remember is while Aristotle is the foundation of dual risk reduction and uh, sets the foundation of why we believe epixaban to be superior to warfarin in both efficacy and safety, this plethora of real world data really complements that data understanding the limitations of real world data that it doesn't stand alone the the beauty of it is it adds to uh, some of the knowledge that is hard to find in clinical trials which is comparative effectiveness comparative safety um, and this is a trend that we're seeing in industry it's not just the alliance is doing real world I mean we're, we are lucky enough to get data from completely uh, outside of alliance sources because these measures of healthcare delivery are getting to be very important to the customers, physicians and payers in making healthcare decisions.